Halloween in the 70s, 80s, 90s, and early 2000s. It was a time of absolute enchantment for kids. The onset of fall was accompanied by more than just the changing colors of leaves and the onset of cooler weather. It signaled the beginning of a season brimming with excitement, anticipation, and a delightful dash of the macabre. Decorations popped up in every corner, transforming mundane homes and local storefronts into spooky spectacles that sparked our imaginations. Our televisions became portals to otherworldly adventures, with Halloween specials like It's the Great Pumpkin Charlie Brown, Garfield's Halloween Adventure, Night of the Living Pumpkin, and Candy Bar Creepshow, plus a countless array of others that brought our beloved characters into the realm of the fantastical. The experience of trick-or-treating, donning costumes that let us embody our favorite heroes, monsters, or anything our hearts desired, was a rite of passage that allowed us to claim our part in this grand, collective celebration. One of the most evocative tokens from those Halloweens long since past that brings back a tidal wave of nostalgia for us adults is the coveted monster cereals from General Mills. Seeing Count Chocula, Frankenberry, and Boo Berry grace the grocery store shelves is like welcoming back old friends every year. The cereals, once available year-round, believe it or not, gained a particular significance during those Halloween seasons of old, their colorful boxes and delightful flavors adding a dose of supernatural fun to our breakfast tables, an aspect we obviously embraced all the more during spooky season. However, the availability of these iconic cereals would cease to exist towards the end of the 2000s, and the monsters seemingly disappeared from our lives, before returning only a few years later, when General Mills made the decision to release these iconic cereals as seasonal exclusives, further strengthening their association with our favorite eerie holiday. This move made each succeeding Halloween from then on out a sugary sweet homecoming of sorts, a time when we could revisit the nostalgic flavors and characters from our youth, making these cereals an indelible part of our Halloween traditions and memories once again. Today, at least for old and folded adults such as myself, Halloween serves as a precious time capsule, a chance to relive and reconnect with the magic and mystery of our childhoods. The monster cereals, with their vibrant legacy, are a cherished part of that nostalgic journey. In the early spring of 1971, Breakfast tables across the country were introduced to two distinctive new flavors, Count Chocula, a rich chocolate delight, and Frankenberry, a burst of strawberry goodness. These were the inaugural cereals in a whole new series, each representing an innovative twist on the morning staple. Count Alfred Chocula, the namesake of the chocolate-infused offering, was as mischievous as he was charming. On the other hand, Frankenberry, associated with the strawberry option, was endearingly clumsy yet passionate about his cereal. The brand's marketing approach was whimsical, often involving light-hearted skirmishes between the two beloved cereal mascots. Television commercials showcased these comedic disputes as each monster argued ferociously in favor of their respective cereal. The friendly rivalry formed the backbone of the promotional efforts for the serials, providing a dash of humor and intrigue that appealed to a wide audience. In the early months of 1972, an unexpected side effect from the Frankenberry cereal emerged. The cereal incorporated a pigment that the human digestive system found impossible to process, leading to a rather unusual result. It transformed the color of some children's stool to a shocking pink. This peculiar symptom became universally known as the, quote, Frankenberry stool. Parents and physicians alike were surprised and bemused by this harmless, yet decidedly extraordinary consequence of consuming the strawberry-flavored breakfast treat. Naturally, this peculiar incident did not go unnoticed by the cereal's manufacturer. They were quick to respond, keenly addressing the consumer concerns that had been raised. Thus, 
the recipe for both Frankenberry and its chocolatey counterpart, Count Chocula, underwent a significant transformation. The aim was to omit the troublesome pigment that had sparked the unexpected toilet time revelations. The swift reformulation served as a demonstration of the manufacturer's commitment to customer welfare and satisfaction ensuring that the beloved breakfast cereals could continue to be enjoyed without any unsettling surprises. As fate would have it, monster cereals would not remain a two-monster show for long, just as the aforementioned verbal duels between Count Chocula and Frankenberry reached their fever pitch. An unexpected character would step into the frame, typically a character dubbed Booberry. The sudden interference disrupted their lively banter, leading to a hilariously dramatic reaction that left them completely spooked, much to the amusement of viewers. This recurrent twist was a clever way to introduce new characters and serials, injecting freshness into the narrative while keeping audiences hooked for what was to come next, and in the early months of 1973, Boo Berry himself officially made his flavorful debut as his own cereal, staking its claim as the world's pioneer in blueberry-flavored breakfast cereals. Though it was introduced locally at first, not too long thereafter, it had taken a bold, nationwide stride, delighting cereal lovers with its unique blueberry taste. Boo Berry had arrived. In 1974, another addition joined the flavorful lineup, Fruit Brute, a cartoony werewolf boasting a cherry-flavored cereal. However, its presence on the breakfast scene was relatively short-lived, at least compared to its colleagues, because after a commendable journey of eight years, the Fruit Brute was retired from production in 1982, leaving a vacancy in the series, a vacancy that would last another six years. And in 1988, a new contender entered the cereal arena, aiming to finally fill the gap left by Fruit Brute's retired cherry sugary deliciousness. This new monster would be called Fruity Yummy Mummy, which brought a fresh, collectively fruity presence to the brand that didn't exclusively focus on cherry flavor like its werewolf predecessor. But despite its vibrant character, Fruity Yummy Mummy's tenure was even shorter than that of its predecessor, and by 1992, after only a handful of years in the market, it was also discontinued. However, going back to the topic of Fruit Brute, the legacy of the cherry-loving werewolf lingered beyond its breakfast table reign, and its eventual replacement by the Fruity Yummy Mummy. Notably, it enjoyed a moment of cinematic glory, appearing as a visual treat in two of Quentin Tarantino's famed movies, Pulp Fiction and Reservoir Dogs. These unexpected cameo appearances served as an exciting Easter egg for viewers, firmly rooting Fruit Brute in the popular culture of the time. The year 2005 saw the charismatic Count Chocula venture into the Super Bowl limelight, featuring in MasterCard's Icons commercial during the game. This distinctive advertisement brought together numerous iconic mascots, gathered around a dinner table for a memorable gathering. Count Chocula, with his unique charm, was an unmistakable presence among this illustrious assembly. In 2010, Betty Crocker took a monstrously creative step, adding a new twist to the monster cereal legacy. They launched Frankenberry and Booberry fruit roll-ups, providing a fresh, fruit-flavored way for fans to savor these beloved characters, playing into the nostalgia of longtime fans of the brand, as well as keeping these characters stirring in the public psyche at large. Meanwhile, General Mills was also innovating with their breakfast products. They introduced Count Chocula cereal bars, offering a convenient and tasty way for fans to enjoy the cherished chocolatey flavor on the go. A significant shift in the distribution strategy for the monster cereals themselves also occurred in 2010. The once year-round staples transitioned into seasonal treats, appearing on the markets solely during the festive period of autumn, particularly aligning with the Halloween season in September and October. 
This decision underscored the monster-themed branding of the cereals, aligning their release with the spookiest time of the year, heightening the anticipation and excitement surrounding their annual return, and foreshadowing the enormous impact they would have on the Halloween season in the years to come. Despite the limited availability of the cereals, General Mills ensured that the legacy of these beloved brands remained accessible all year round. Even as we moved into the final months of 2010, anyone with a keen interest in these cereals could visit the official General Mills website to uncover a wealth of information. From nutritional details to fascinating historical facts about the cereal's inception and journey, this online resource served as a constant hub of spooky information. In a surprising turn of events, just a few more years down the road, in August of 2013, General Mills brought back the entire quintet of their monster cereals for the Halloween season. For fans of the brand, it was a joyous reunion, especially with the much-awaited return of two old favorites, Fruit Brute and Fruity Yummy Mummy, after a long hiatus that seemingly lasted a lifetime. Upon their comeback, both Fruit Brute and Fruity Yummy Mummy underwent a refreshing facelift. Their packaging was updated, providing a modern edge while aligning them with the current designs of their fellow monster cereals. Furthermore, in a nod to contemporary trends, Fruit Brute underwent a subtle name modification, re-emerging as Fruit Brute once again, but with a slight change in spelling. Adding another layer of nostalgia to the celebration, I Mockery disclosed an enticing piece of news. Special retro edition boxes, bearing the original artwork from the serial's earlier days, were set to hit the shelves. However, these collectible items were exclusively available at Target stores, turning them into a must-have for dedicated fans and collectors. These retro boxes served as a delightful homage to the serial's rich history allowing customers to relive the initial thrill of the monster cereal experience. In a strategic collaboration in 2014, General Mills joined forces with DC Comics with the aim of refreshing the look of their iconic cereals for the upcoming Halloween season. This unique alliance married the captivating world of breakfast cereals with the creative prowess of the comic book industry. The newly redesigned cereal boxes were unveiled on the 6th of August. Each cereal was reimagined by a different artist, adding their distinct touch to the beloved characters. The ethereal Booberry received a stylish makeover by the accomplished Jim Lee. Terry Dodson lent his artistic flair to Count Chocula, transforming the classic character with a fresh new look. And finally, the lovable Frankenberry was redesigned by Dave Johnson, introducing a new perspective on the cherished character. These designs were not just refreshing visual updates, they served to reignite the magic of the Monster Serial's brand, blending nostalgia with the vibrant, dynamic artistry of contemporary comic design. This partnership with DC Comics infused a fresh energy into the serials, capturing the attention of both longtime fans and a new generation of serial enthusiasts. The year 2021 marked a monumental milestone for the Monster Serials brand, as it was the 50th anniversary of their introduction to the world. In honor of this significant occasion, General Mills announced an extraordinary plan to pay tribute to the beloved serials. It was the release of a unique, amalgamated serial named Monster Mash. This special edition combined elements from all the monster serials, celebrating the distinct flavors and characters that had made them so cherished over the years. This commemorative cereal was more than just a blend of nostalgic flavors. It was a symbol of the enduring popularity and the memorable journey of the monster serials since their inception. With the release of Monster Mash cereal, General Mills celebrated five decades of breakfast time monsters, honoring their iconic status in the world of cereal. Following the resounding success of the 50th anniversary festivities just one year prior, General Mills decided to bring back a fan favorite in 2022, releasing Fruit Brute upon the world once again, joining Count Chocula, Frankenberry, and Booberry, respectively. That year, 
The brand decided to grace the cereal boxes with a touch of artistic brilliance. Renowned artist Cause was invited to reimagine the cereal covers. Inspired by the cereal's vintage designs, Cause managed to blend nostalgia with contemporary artistry, resulting in striking visuals that intrigued both longtime fans and new consumers. In June 2023, General Mills unveiled a fresh face to join the legendary lineup of monster cereals, Carmella Creeper, a zombie DJ and cousin to Frankenberry himself. Carmella's entrance was accompanied by a cereal that offered a unique caramel apple flavor, a first for the monster cereals. In addition to Carmella's debut, General Mills had another surprise up its sleeve. In a nod to the success of their 50th anniversary edition, the company revealed plans to launch a remake of the amalgamated cereal, a product now dubbed as the Monster Mash Remix cereal. This new offering would incorporate all six cereals, even the two that didn't return individually in 2023, promising a breakfast experience that was a true celebration of the brand's rich history and its exciting future. During the early stages of their existence, extending into the early 1980s, the Monster cereals were not only renowned for their distinctive flavors and unique characters, but also for an extensive array of both in-box and mail-away premiums that accompanied the cereals themselves. This generous offering of premiums contributed to the overall appeal of the brand, transforming each cereal box into a treasure trove of exciting goodies. The range of items offered was diverse and captivating, appealing to a wide spectrum of interests. Fans could look forward to unearthing a plethora of goodies, including posters and stickers, perfect for decorating their personal spaces. For the creatively inclined, there were paint sets waiting to be discovered. Speedster cars and parachutes added a thrill of adventure, while vinyl advertising figures served as charming collectibles. In 1979, General Mills upped the ante with a particularly unique offering. They introduced three flexi discs that could be obtained directly from the cereal boxes themselves, each one presenting a delightful auditory experience. These included the monsters Go Disco, A Lively Journey into the World of Disco Music, Count Chocula Goes Hollywood, an entertaining tale of Count Chocula's adventures, and Monster Adventures in Outer Space a thrilling intergalactic saga. With such a plethora of premiums, the Monster cereals offered much more than just a breakfast experience. They provided a fun-filled journey with treasures to discover and stories to unravel, making each cereal box an adventure in its own right. Monster cereals, with their vibrant colors, captivating characters, and delightful flavors, have woven themselves into the nostalgic fabric of our childhoods, particularly those who grew up during the 70s, 80s, 90s, and early 2000s. Ever since the Monster Cereals brand transformed from year-round favorites to seasonal delights, the arrival of these cereals on store shelves have signaled the onset of the Halloween season, turning breakfast time into an exciting prelude to the holiday's tricks and treats. Their whimsical monster mascots and seasonal availability have made them more than just cereals. They've become a cherished tradition, an intrinsic part of the Halloween psyche that have helped transform ordinary spooky season mornings into thrilling All Hallows adventures. Even today, as adults, the anticipation of the monster cereal's return stirs a profound sense of excitement and nostalgia, reminding us of simpler times and the joys of childhood. As the leaves turn and the air grows crisp, we find ourselves yearning for the familiar faces of Count Chocula, Frankenberry, and their monstrous companions. So here's to those cherished memories and the many more to come. Thank you for joining me on this journey down memory lane and for making the monster cereals a part of your annual Halloween tradition. Until next time, keep the spirit of Halloween alive. And remember, fruity yummy mummy makes your tummy go yummy. Yummy.